안녕하세요. 한국어 배치의 이한입니다. So the title of this video isn't actually clickbait, I promise. There really was a day where I just suddenly was able to understand a lot of people that I was not able to understand before. Now, I'll say beforehand, I don't think it happened like specifically that day, but there was a specific moment, a specific time where I realized that something had happened. So I was talking with Nanju about what to make this week. And uh, she said that she thought I should share this story um, because she thinks it's kind of funny. So <laughs> I figured, why not? So before I tell the story, I want to give a disclaimer. This video is not going to be one of those, you know, like a banner ads that sounds like guy shares secret tip to learn language in one day. Teachers hate him. No. <laughs> Nothing like that. Real language learning requires tens of thousands of hours of input and some deliberate study and a lot of patience. This is not some magical tip or magical thing that'll make it, you know, let you skip the process. What this story is about, that I've now come to realize, is a breakthrough that I kind of accidentally had. So I first came to Korea right after I finished college. I knew virtually nothing about the language. I had just kind of studied the writing system, like before and then like on the plane, basically. But when I first got here, I really didn't speak any at all or understand any either. So after I started like consciously studying, I uh, got to a like a low intermediate level of being able to do Korean on paper pretty quickly. This might be because I have some history with language learning, but I don't really know. So I had been at it for about a year by the time I met Nanju. You know, that girl from the vlogs. <laughs> so when I first met her, I was able to communicate a little bit in Korean. Uh, but the only person that I could communicate well with was her. We'd spend lots of time together, we'd go on dates, we would text and talk in Korean all the time. And while we were doing this, we had basically no communication issues. She understood me, I understood her. When we would meet up with other Korean friends though, I struggled to understand and be understood. There just seemed to be some kind of like barrier between them and me that I just couldn't break through. When I heard what they had said repeated by Nanju, and when they heard what I had said repeated by Nanju, we were able to understand each other. But without that intermediary, for some reason, I just was not able to communicate well with other native speakers of Korean. What they were saying just like didn't sound like Korean to me. So I remember this night where this all kind of like came to a head, at least for me. We had gone out to a restaurant and I ordered for us, um, you know, just trying to be like polite. <laughs> you know, I called the waiter and I like ordered our food and the waiter looked at me like I was speaking Arabic or something, some language that they didn't understand. And then they looked at Nanju and said, eh? And I remember Nanju looked at the waiter too and was like confused why they were looking at her. She's like, did you not understand what he said? That's like what her face was saying. Then she repeated to the waiter, like exactly what I had said. And the waiter said, okay, thanks. Took the menu and walked away. So I kept a happy face, but like in my mind, I'm like stewing. I'm like, why didn't they understand what I said? I'm pronouncing things correctly. I'm using the right grammar. I'm using the right vocabulary. What's the problem? So I remember what happened next pretty vividly. So we went back to my place after we finished eating. We were gonna like watch a movie or something. And I'm sitting on the floor in front of the couch and she's sitting on the couch and I'm just stewing, right? I'm like, what's the problem? Why can't anyone understand me? Why am I investing so much time into this language? Blah, 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 blah. And I turn around and I asked her like, what's wrong with me? Why, be honest with me, be brutal. Is there something I'm doing that makes me impossible to understand? Am I pronouncing things wrong? Am I doing the wrong like, you know, sentence construction what what's the problem just be honest with me so i can fix this and she says back to me like i don't know at that time i genuinely thought she was just lying to me to make me feel better like she didn't want to like hurt my feelings or anything like that um but she assured me that she wasn't she just really said she didn't know one of dr stephen Krashen's now famous hypotheses about second language acquisition is called the effective filter hypothesis. So to oversimplify a bit, what this hypothesis points out is that somewhere in our brain, there appears to be some sort of filtering mechanism, but whether or not it's physical, it doesn't really matter. But there appears to be some sort of filtering mechanism that blocks input and output to the language processing centers of the brain, or at least affects our acquisition and production. Things like stress, pain, negative emotions, fatigue, uh, feeling like an outsider from you know the group that you're with, these sorts of things can activate this filter. 
or so the hypothesis hypothesizes. <laughs> This coincides with a conjecture that he's made. So this has not been scientifically studied. It's just sort of a guess that he's making that there seems to be something deep down in us that knows our identity. Maybe it's like a defense mechanism or something, but it may be what prevents people who learn a second language later in life from having perfect pronunciation. Like there's some sort of voice deep down in you that says, you're not a part of this group. Don't try too hard. Don't get caught. That's his conjecture on the idea, but uh, he uses a couple of anecdotes to explain how people overcome this in certain situations. And you can go read up on that on your own. It's not really important to the story, but what I'm gonna tell you in the rest of the story, I think is really related to these ideas. So I wanted to stick those in the middle here. I hadn't heard about any of these things at this point in my life, but looking back on this situation, on this story as a whole, it's hard not to wonder if this is kind of what was happening to me or if this is related to my experience in some way. So at this point, I think the best way to describe my relationship with Korean, the language, was resentment. I, I think I started getting angry at Korean because it was this thing that I just wasn't able to do. I got like annoyed or stressed out or like I, I, anxious when I had to speak Korean with people who weren't Nanju because for some inexplicable reason, all of these people couldn't understand me, but she could with no problem. So when I was kind of angry, uh, frustrated or whatever, I started just over exaggerating my speech. She and I would be watching a TV show and I would copy the cheesy actor or I would say something, you know, like I had heard it in a historical drama, way over pronounced, almost like making fun of the language in a way, just with Nanju, of course, just kind of goofing around with my girlfriend about something that was really making me upset. But then something strange happened. So a few weeks after the restaurant disaster, I know my problems are huge. I got a call from Nanju while I was on my way home from work uh, to come have dinner with her and two of her friends who you guys actually know because they've been on the vlog. This was with Tabin and Sura. She said, come have some pizza with us. So let me set the scene here. I'm stressed. I'm tired. I worked two jobs that day. It's fall. It's starting to get cold outside. It's pouring rain. I have to go meet up with two people who I have never been able to communicate with properly yet. And worst of all, we're going to eat pizza at my least favorite pizza place of all. It's Mr. Pizza. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mr. Pizza. I, just, I gotta speak the truth. So suffice it to say, I was not thrilled about this invite, but I went anyway. So when I got to the pizza place, I was not in the best of moods, let's say. I got soaked by the rain. I was going to have to eat cold pizza that I don't like the flavor of. I uh, was tired. And when I walked in and sat down, Tabin says to me, hey, you got to go grab your own pizza from the buffet. So I heard what she said and I just responded to her without thinking right away in my overpronounced Korean. Okay, I'll go grab some and I'll be right back. So I get back to the table and I sit down grumpily with my cold flavorless pizza. And Tabin says to me, how did you suddenly just get so good at Korean? And at this moment, I was stunned. I'm thinking to myself, whoa, I can understand you. Like everything she was saying just made perfect sense. I understood her without even thinking about it. And what I was saying, she was understanding too. That was wild. So here's what I think happened. One, I had lowered inhibitions. I'm sure you've all heard the cliche about like, you know, people, you drink a little bit of alcohol and your foreign language capabilities increase. I think the fact that I was distracted, unhappy, and not focused on speaking Korean well kind of took the edge off the whole situation. I wasn't so much in my head about doing a good job. The second thing I think happened here was that my over-exaggerated Korean and my mimicry of actors and you know things I had heard on TV shows that felt really cheesy and everything had kind of tuned my ear and my mouth muscles to start using the language more like a native speaker. There's a lot more involved in a word than just its pronunciation. There's the speed at which you say it and the intonation that comes along with those syllables that creates the full, you know, concept of that word in a an auditory sense. You know, looking back on this situation, I really can't help but wonder if Dr. Krashen's speculation, his conjecture about this identity thing is what was really holding me back from speaking Korean that people could understand and listening to Korean in a way that it's meant to be listened to. Maybe deep down, knowing that I'm not a member of this group was kind of sabotaging my ability 
to interact with the language the way that a native speaker actually does. These are all kind of abstract ideas, but like I said, I really can't help but wonder when I think about it. As I have, you know, perused the internet and learned a lot more about language acquisition uh, over the years I've spent with Korean, I've come to learn that there are a lot of other people with stories similar to mine. There's a day where they suddenly realize that they're able to use this language now. Dr. Krashen himself actually tells a story of a colleague of his who did this with French. He showed up to a final exam, you know, wearing a beret with like a baguette or something and over exaggerated his uh, pronunciation in an attempt to mock his teacher. And the teacher's response was, that's it. Where was this all semester? Another YouTuber I found talked about his journey with Spanish and how he had developed a similar resentment towards the language that I had with Korean. I'm smart, I'm a good student, I've studied languages, I understand a lot of this stuff on paper, why isn't it working for me in person? So he went home and I think he said he like talked to his mirror like a telenovela actor. He said like, dos tacos por favor. You know, like those overdramatic soap opera style shows. But when he went out on the street after doing that kind of stuff, you know, on his own, the language came out much better. And he started understanding what people were saying much better. I think that maybe overdoing it, like really leaning into some pronunciation practice or shadowing practice or whatever that uh, really over exaggerates the pronunciation of the language might be useful in training your ears and your brain and your you know mouth muscles to utilize the language in a similar way to a native speaker. I mean, native speakers choose to speak that way on stage or in a performance for a reason, right? So I think doing these sorts of things kind of pulls away that veil of exoticness or differentness, otherness, foreignness that makes pronouncing a foreign language so subconsciously difficult for us. But you know, I don't know. It's just kind of my experience. It's just a story that I thought I could share, something that was very formative for me while I was learning Korean and hopefully something that could be helpful for you. To summarize everything, the day that I suddenly could understand Korean, or at least suddenly realized that I could understand Korean. It came after I started doing things that sort of freed me from this anxiety that came along with trying to be correct all the time. So I don't know, maybe sometimes it, uh, it just helps to be kind of goofy. <laughs> I hope all of you can have a day like I had sometime soon too. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.